Hi, and welcome to Homegrown Florida. I'm Katrina, and today we're going to be making these oh so buttery, amazing, crispy yet soft sourdough waffles. This recipe is actually for waffles, but you can use the same ingredients to make pancakes. We're a little partial to waffles because soft on the inside and crispy on the outside. And a great thing about these sourdough waffles is that you can make a huge batch ahead of time and then freeze them. And then all you have to do is take them out of the freezer and either pop them in the toaster, toaster oven, or even your microwave, and they taste just as good as the day they were made. We have these for breakfast, but we also have these as desserts. Just add a little strawberry and whipped cream. The reason these sourdough waffles are so amazing is because I make them with my sourdough starter. Sourdough is a fermented flour or a wild yeast, and it has great nutritional benefits like probiotics, as well as it breaks down the gluten in the waffles so that they're easier to digest. Now, this doesn't mean it doesn't have any gluten because it does. So if you have celiac disease or are gluten intolerant, this may not be the recipe for you. But if you just have a slight sensitivity, these waffles are amazing. So let's get right into the recipe. First, we start out with two cups of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you can add two tablespoons of vinegar into the milk and allow it to sit for 30 minutes to actually create buttermilk. I'm using my homemade apple cider vinegar that I made from the cores and peels of apples. Now I've also made this recipe with non-dairy milk like almond or coconut milk and it came out just as good. Next, add two cups of flour. I'm using all purpose, but I have used bread flour and whole wheat flour before and it all turned out well. Now we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. Add the buttermilk to the dry ingredients. And then next, what we wanna do is add one full cup of sourdough starter and stir it in really well. You can use fed, unfed, or even discard from your sourdough starter. Any of them work, but they do have a more sour taste if used unfed starter. Now cover the bowl and allow it to sit on the counter overnight for at least six hours. This will ferment the batter and break down the gluten in the flour. Once you uncover the bowl in the morning, you're gonna add two large eggs to the mixture. For a vegan spin in this recipe, you can use a product called Just Eggs or replace with applesauce or mashed bananas. Now I'm adding half a teaspoon of baking powder and another half a teaspoon of salt. Stir well. If the mixture is too thick, just add one or two tablespoons of milk to thin it out. Preheat your waffle maker or if you're making pancakes instead of waffles, preheat your skillet. I spray with a cooking spray, but you can also brush with butter or even olive oil. Pour about one cup of the mixture into the waffle maker. I let it sit for about 10 seconds in the waffle maker before I flip it. As the waffle maker cooks, you'll probably see steam coming from the waffle iron. This is completely normal. When the light turns on indicating that the waffle is ready, wait about another 10, maybe 15 seconds before flip flipping it back over and removing the waffle. I find that this helps make the waffle extra crispy. Now just repeat this process until you are completely out of batter. This recipe usually makes about five or six very large waffles. If you make these waffles, let me know how they taste. Head down into the comment section and leave me a note. And make sure you get creative when making your waffles. You can add chocolate chips, 
blueberries, strawberries, pretty much anything works great in this recipe. And if you haven't started your sourdough starter yet, I have a video that I'll post right here that tells you how to make your own sourdough starter at home. <music>